Good morning, Arlington family and friends. It is always a great day at Arlington Christian School because every day is a day of Thanksgiving and every day is a day to be excited about what God is doing here at our amazing school. And before I get into the meat of why we're here today, I was reminded that I did not give a shout out on yesterday when I was celebrating our basketball teams, I was remiss in not acknowledging our phenomenal cheerleaders. So wherever you are, I need you to put your hands together for our cheerleaders as well. Woo -woo! Awesome, awesome job, ladies. So proud of you. Well, today marks our second access for the school year, and I, for one, could not be more excited. Access, which stands for the Arlington Christian School Speaker Series, is all about giving our scholars access to real-life success stories. The program is built upon the premise that you can be and do anything you put your mind to. But we also believe that you can be what you see. With that thought in mind, we have searched far and wide to bring you some incredible people to share their journeys with you. Each speaker is unique in their own way and today is no exception. So stay tuned and let's get this show on the road. We will now have our welcome which will be done by Reagan Okaracha. Good morning. On the behalf of the Board of Trustees of ACA, led by Dr. Leo Wee, our principal, Dr. Kelvin Griffin, the entire faculty, staff, administration, and family of Arlington, I would like to welcome you to access the Arlington Christian School Speaker Series. We have, a, we have a sensational speaker, Rihanna Robinson, is going to tell us all about her. In the meantime, we will now prepare our hearts for the prayer, which will be brought to you by, by Mackenzie Moore. Good morning. Um, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Good morning. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Thank you for this day. Thank you for letting us live another day. And thank you for letting this be coming to speak for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Mackenzie. My name is Brianna Robinson, and this morning, it is my distinct delight to introduce our speaker, Dr. Kathleen Bertrand, as today's access speaker. Dr. Bertrand is a native of Atlanta, Georgia, and for more than 32 years, she put on for her city through hospitality, film, and music. She has helped the world see what a great place Atlanta is through her understanding and outstanding leadership with the Atlanta Convention and Visitors Bureau. She also created a platform, the Bronze Lens Film Festival, for a broader engagement in the film industry for people of color in a way that showcased Atlanta and its history and culture. Also, her three octave melodious voice has been heard all over the world, from the United States to Germany to Switzerland as an award-winning jazz vocalist. Dr. Bertrand has so many accomplishments and awards to her credit. I could never name them all, but I would like to share just a few. She is a charter member of Array, the film distribution network founded by producer Dr. Ava DuVernay. She is a graduate of Spelman College, and in 2018, she received the Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters degree from this same institution. Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms presented Dr. Bertrand with the Phoenix Award, the city of Atlanta's highest honor. She has also received proclamations from the cities of Atlanta, East Point, and College Park all for her music artistry. Additionally, Dr. Bertrand has opened for many of America's finest jazz artists to include Ray Charles, Will Downing, Rachel Farrell, and Najee, Najuk, 
Roy Ayers, and Kenny G. Most recently, Dr. Bertram received the highest honor of Atlanta's hospitality community when she was inducted into the Atlanta Convention and Visitors Bureau Hospitality Hall of Fame. Because of this honor, a picture of her now hangs at George World, Georgia World Congress Center, along with the other inductees. Arlington family, I know you got to be excited about our speaker for today. So please put your hands together and help me give a warm Arlington welcome to Dr. Kathleen Birch. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Arlington Christian School. And thank you, Alonia, for inviting me to be a part of your access program. It sounds exciting. And um, I know I love speakers programs. I created one for my children when they were in elementary school at Our Lady of Lourdes School years ago, many years ago. My children are all grown now. I have four children. I have two sons and uh, twin daughters. So um, they kept me busy uh, many years ago, but now everybody's on their own and uh, doing uh, life as it fits them. So today I wanted to share a few things with you that I grew up with, a few sayings that were important in our household um, as I talk about my life. One of the sayings that my mother always said, and I still uh, keep this close to my heart now, is it's nice to be important, but it's just as important to be nice. She always said that, and I've never forgotten that, no, many, no matter how many awards or accolades or things like that. I've always just tried to remain centered and... Um, get a chance to connect with people that way when you're grounded. Another thing that my grandmother used to say was you, you attract more flies with honey than vinegar. Now, not that anybody's attracting flies, so to speak, but she was basically saying that um, your kindness, your sweetness is easier to have people around you that want to be around you than being sour or bitter like vinegar. So that's another saying that I always kept around me. And then the final thing that I want to share with you is something that my fifth grade teacher said. Um, I went to Our Lady of Lourdes Catholic School. So similar in concept to uh, Arlington as a Christian school. And my fifth grade teacher always talked about the importance of reading well and speaking better. <laughs> reading well and speaking better. And I've always kept that close to me because she was talking about the power of communication, being able to uh, discuss or talk to anyone and being able to write those thoughts that are in your head and put them uh, to paper, or in these days, put them on your computer so that someone else can read your thoughts and know what you're thinking and understand what you're saying. Um, I've combined all of those uh, sayings in my life over the years, whether it was elementary school or high school or college or in my professional life, in trying to treat people well along the way, um, really trying to reach back as I've gotten older to talk with young people or next generation people so that they understand um, what it takes to get to the things that I've done. It may appear easy, but none of it's easy. We all have had our struggles and challenges along the way, but what makes life um, uh, comfortable and more bearable is knowing that you've got good friends and family around you that support you, whatever it is that you try to do. When I was in elementary school, I can't remember that there was any one thing that I wanted to be. I wanted to teach one time. I wanted to be a nurse at one time, but mostly I wanted to be a housewife with a house full of kids. <laughs> 
that was the main thing I wanted to do. I think because at the time I was growing up, the Kennedys were very prominent in our lives. There was a President Kennedy. He had all of these brothers and the brothers all had big families. And I just thought that just looked grand, having lots of people around the dinner table and to talk with. And as it turned out, I did have four kids, but I never have really had the opportunity to just be uh, at home. I've always worked while I was raising my kids and my kids were being educated. In high school, my thoughts turned to writing. I had the honor and privilege of attending Spelman College um, really in the summers, way before I became a student there. And I attended the intensified pre-college program that they used to have. And it really just set my brain on fire. I was uh, really thirsty to learn even more. And so out of my Spelman College experience, I really grew to love writing. We, they, uh, Spelman exposed me to black poets that I did not hear about or read about in my high school experience. The poetry of Langston Hughes particularly influenced me and was uh, very inspirational to me. And so I started to write more. I started to write poetry and even took a stab at a short story or two. When I got to Spelman College, um, I thought I wanted to major in math, but no, I wound up being an English major. So again, my concentration was on the written word by uh, novelists and uh, well, writers uh, and poets um, that really influenced what I did and how I did what I did. One of my favorite writers was Richard Wright, Richard Wright, who really chronicled the experience of being black in America at the early part of the, the 20th century um, and the obstacles that he had to face. And because of his writing, um, it's so easy now to reflect on the things that, that Richard Wright wrote because now we're seeing some of those same things play out uh, in America still today. But I loved uh, reading what he wrote. I loved Malcolm X. Um, the Autobiography of Malcolm X was one of my favorite books when I was in college. The poetry of Nikki Giovanni uh, and the poetry of Don Lee, both whom affirmed who we were as Black people as African Americans, and I loved that. I just loved what they were saying. Um, I, having come from a, a, a white high school environment here in Atlanta, uh, Grady High School, I just didn't get fed the the marvelous creations by people that looked like me. Being at Spelman exposed me to black artistry uh, as well. Being able to appreciate the many creations by artists of color, both women and men, um, really enhanced my life and gave me a sense, a greater sense of who I was. So um, all along the way, I've been inspired by the creations of people of color, whether poetry or whether great novels or whether uh, wonderful music compositions, I will get to that part, or whether great art um, that was created by people that look like us. That was very important in forming who I was. When it comes to my music, um, I've always sung, I feel like I've always sung. Um, as a child in elementary school, I sang um, in the bathroom. Sorry but that was my greatest studio. <laughs> I didn't know what a studio was. I just know that the acoustics were great and I could be in the bathroom and sing forever. Um, so much so that my older brothers used to call my mother to make me come out of the bathroom because I'd just be in there singing all along. During high school, uh, well, and elementary school, I was in the choir at church. Uh, and then I got to into the choir in high school and entered into a talent contest that my high school had at that time. 
and won it. And because I won that contest, the one of the judges wanted to enter me into a national contest, very similar to uh, some of the uh, music shows that you see on television now. And um, so I entered, I won the regional uh, competition. And then I was sent, because of that, I was sent to Los Angeles, California, Hollywood, to record a national television show called the uh, National Super Team Contest. And um, I won as best female vocal in that contest. So that really set my music career to launch. I could have, I had a, a contract with a major recording label, but I didn't take the contract because I really wanted to finish my education. I wanted to finish high school and I wanted to go to college. My mother had impressed upon me the importance of really having a good college education if I could achieve that. And so that's what I wanted to do. But music never left my side. As I said, I sang all through, even after winning the contest. Oh, by the way, <clears throat> in the contest, I won a car. I won a, a color television. It was sponsored by Singer. That's the company that makes sewing machines. So I won the latest, greatest sewing machine, which was grand because I could sew. Uh, and I uh, knew how to make clothes and things for the house. <clears throat> so it was really great. Um, I took the money from the car that I won and I put it in the bank until I could find a car that I really liked myself. Uh, and I bought that car once I decided that I was going to go to uh, Spelman College. So I, I would have a way to get back and forth to school. At Spelman, I did not sing in the Glee Club, Glee Club the famed Glee Club of Spelman, but a lot of people learned that I sang. And so I was always uh, invited to various uh, opportunities to sing. And the best was I was invited to do studio work, studio work. Um, it refers to going to a music studio to record, <clears throat> whether it's a music project or something else. For me, it was commercials. I had a chance while I was in college to make money by singing for national commercials. And it was absolutely wonderful. I loved it. That's, that was my real introduction to studio work, which would be the uh, foundation for years later as I began to record my own CD projects. But I did this in college. And in doing so, I had the opportunity to meet a wonderful young lady from Atlanta whose name is LaTanya Richardson. Well, it was LaTanya Richardson then. We became great friends behind um, our shared experience. She was also a Spelman student. Um, and over the years, we have remained friends along with her husband, who is Samuel L. Jackson. So look, the actress, producer, director, uh, philanthropist LaTanya Richardson Jackson was my friend. Uh, that did uh, commercial studio sessions with me here in Atlanta, Georgia. You never know uh, what friendships that last can turn into over the years. So uh, friends are, are very valuable uh, over the years, always, always friends. Um, also at Spelman, I had a chance to do my first taste of international travel. And this was again relating to uh, the creative pursuit. It was relating to writing there was a creative writers uh, workshop in Kingston, Jamaica that was taking place. And I applied for that and um, I won. And along with other Spelman students, I was able to travel to Jamaica uh, and live there in the dormitory for two weeks while being entertained um, and uh, taught by some of Jamaica's finest writers and um, talent. The, the Jamaican Dance Company was known around the world, much like uh, the Alvin Ailey Dance Company is known here in America. And they took us to, per to performances of the Jamaican Dance Company. But mostly we were writers. We were creating poetry and short stories and we were being critiqued by Jamaica's finest um, professors and writers. Uh, at the time.
that was a great international experience. And I had a chance to go back the following year, but that was my first time traveling internationally. Um, over the years, I have traveled quite a bit and I have particularly enjoyed those opportunities to travel and combine something creative. In my case, combine my music with my experience of travel. So that's been really grand. And um, I wish that for all of you. Once we get past this pandemic and things get back to normal, um, whenever the opportunity to travel arises or whenever you get a chance to apply for uh, internships or scholarships or anything that will move you from Atlanta just for a temporary uh, time, I would certainly advise taking advantage of that because it really broadens your horizon and broadens your view and your scope of the world. During my 20s, I worked at Spelman College um, and that was also a great experience because now I got to call on the uh, the my background as an English major and I was leading the uh, Spelman Messenger, which is an, a, a, a quarterly publication that comes out. And it talks about all the various thing that, things that Spelman graduates have done. And so that was my baby to put that out. And I really just enjoyed the experience of using my skill as a writer. So let me move fast forward um, to the 80s where uh, during that time I had been married, I had my first child and then my second and then my third and fourth, all during the 80s. Um, and I was working for the Atlanta Convention and Visitors Bureau. It is a company here in Atlanta and its goal is to promote Atlanta to other people. I think we take it for granted now that everybody knows about Atlanta and they, they hear about us on television and shows are based in Atlanta. But back in the 80s, most television shows were based out of New York uh, or based out of, of course, Hollywood. And you didn't hear that much mention about Atlanta. So it was exciting to me to work for a company uh, whose, so, whose sole goal was to promote the great things about this city. My particular interest was not only pr promoting the great attractions of the city, but promoting the great people and the great um, people that looked like me that had accomplished so much uh, and in this city and made us who we are. People like uh, Maynard Jackson, who was the first African-American mayor of Atlanta and who actually had come back for another term while I was at the Convention and Visitors Bureau. So it was a, a great day to get a chance to uh, meet Maynard Jackson. Um, I encountered all of Atlanta's mayors during the time I was working for the Atlanta Convention and Visitors Bureau. So Mayor Jackson, uh, Mayor Young, Mayor Franklin, Shirley Franklin, Mayor Bill Campbell, Mayor Kasim Reed, and Mayor Keisha Night, I'm not Keisha Knight, oh my God, uh, Mayor Keisha Bottoms uh, have all been persons that I have encountered during my uh, work for the Atlanta Convention and Visitors Bureau. It was a joy to be there 32 years. So I was there longer than all of you have lived on earth, <laughs> but it was great work. Um, I think this is an amazing city that has really been an example for so many people around the country and particularly for African-Americans who have uh, succeeded in Atlanta. They've come from other cities, either uh, other places in the South or from either the North or the West. And they've come to Atlanta and found a, a marvelous community and have succeeded in it. And I loved being able to talk about those great success stories through the eyes of not only the people that I work with, but the people that I got to encounter from the mayor to city council to black entrepreneurs all over the city. That is the fabric of who we are, teachers, post office workers, um, people that work for their churches, pastors, 
I've encountered all of those people through the years in my work. And you start to see what a marvelous city that we have uh, made up of so many different kinds of people that basically all want the same thing. Um, and that has really just been a joy of my life. So, so many of those um, uh, relationships I still have now. So let me just move a little past the Convention and Visitors Bureau to talk a bit about the Bronze Lens Film Festival. Um, bronze Lens, <laughs> Camera Lens um, Film Festival was started while I was working at the Atlanta Convention and Visitors Bureau because the film industry was really starting to take off here in Georgia. And um, I wanted to use that opportunity to expose my community to how many great um, opportunities there were in film, uh, film and television. We weren't thinking about it that much prior to the industry uh, coming to Atlanta. If you lived in New York or if you lived in um, Chicago or LA, those industries were parts of those cities to the point that people often would naturally just go into those industries, but not so much in Georgia and in Atlanta. And so my interest was to really make sure that people that looked like me knew that here was yet another great industry that we could be a part of. Everybody's not going to be an actor. Uh, everybody's not going to be a great director. Um, but there are hundreds of jobs that, uh, and hundreds of careers that are related to the film and television industry that people can have if they just knew about it. Um, whether you are working on lights or whether you're working on sound or working on set design or costuming or makeup, all of those are vital parts of what it takes to have a great film. Um, and I wanted to make sure that our community was just exposed to what could happen. But in addition to that, I wanted to um, show our community the films that have been created by people of color from around the world um, because people are creating great stories. Our films are nothing but stories that reflect our lives um, or reflect our thoughts in some kind of way. And I thought it would be inspiration to our community to see the many marvelous, tremendous stories that are being created and have been created um, by people of color. And so that's what happens at our film festival each year. We uh, bring in the films of hundreds of uh, filmmakers from all over the world and people view them uh, they talk with the, the authors or the, the writers or the directors of the films and just really get an understanding of what it took to create that um, particular piece of work. I think this year was very different, as you know, because it was a pandemic. But here's the blessing in our pandemic. Although we were a virtual film festival, which means that just like we're doing a virtual conversation now, people around the world had a chance to view our films. So it wasn't just people in Atlanta that could come and physically sit in a theater. We had people around the world that were watching Bronze Lens films, 12,000 in fact. So I'm very excited about the fact that being virtual really exposed us to people around the world. And not only that, we had um, people watching us from 46 countries around the world. And I'm just like, oh my God, these people in Latvia and Portugal and um, New Zealand were watching Bronze Lens Film Festival creations. And that just made my heart swell. It, it made me so happy. Even as we move forward with the festival, I think I'm always going to keep a virtual component because it allows you to reach so many more people and all they have to do really is turn on their computer or their uh, mobile device and be able to connect with the work that we're doing. So I'm very excited about that. So I know I've touched on a lot of things, but I just wanted to give you um, 
a taste of, of, of my life and um, the things that I've done beyond the bio. Um, I've, I'm very grateful for everything that I have. And I wake up each morning uh, in gratitude because I'm retired from my Convention and Visitors Bureau work. I found meaningful work that still allows me to connect with people like uh, all of you. And I still have um, the love of, of my family around and my friends, even in a pandemic, we're able to connect with each other just as we're doing this morning. And so that's been very meaningful and helpful to me. And so I'm just grateful. I love days like this. Autumn is my favorite season of the year because I was born in October. And I just love getting up and looking at the, the leaves and the sunlight on the leaves or watching a leaf shower when the wind blows and the leaves are just blowing all around like rain showers. Um, I truly, truly love that this time of year. I enjoy uh, working out. I enjoy walking. Um, I love to cook. And mom is a great cook, as my kids will all tell you. <laughs> Um, and I've gotten very creative over these past few months, uh, just trying and experimenting with more things that I really didn't have a chance to, to experiment with. And I love to be in my garden, in my yard uh, with my plants and flowers and things like that. So I am open for questions if this is uh, an appropriate time. I'm not uh, sure. I'm looking, checking my notes to see if there's a message that came, but I'm very open to um, any questions that you might have. And I, is there a chat box that would, would come up? Mother to Son by Langston Hughes motivated me growing up. That's from Airy J. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, the poem that uh, has come back to me many times, um, that was my po favorite poem back then, was Langston Hughes, I Too Am America. Now, I'm reading this when I'm in the 60s, but I want you to look that up. Don't ask me to recite it now. I can't. <laughs> but I Too Am America by Langston Hughes, um, because even then he spoke and it was written 20, 30 years before the 60s. He was talking about um, the inequality of life in America, but we are important building blocks in the building of this country. And um, I just clung to that poem because I was in a predominantly white school, which was, uh, and the folks were nice. Folks were really, really nice. But I didn't see a lot of people that looked like me or that understood my life as an African-American. And uh, Langston Hughes' poetry spoke to me at that time. Are there any other uh, questions or comments that you might have? 44, okay. I was um, 11. I started singing in the junior choir at my church here in Atlanta at Liberty Baptist Church. And I was 11 at that time. I actually, though, to tell you the truth, I was singing before. That was the first time publicly singing. But I was singing at home maybe since I was about nine years old. Remember I told you I was singing in the bathroom? That's from the time I was about eight or nine. <laughs> Thank you for that question. What did you want to be when you grow up? 
you know, I wasn't really sure um, at that time. I didn't have any um, aspirations for one thing or another. As I mentioned earlier, at one time, I think I wanted to be a teacher. And at one time, I thought I might want to be a nurse. But, you know, first sight of blood cured me of that. Um, what I really wanted to do was be a, a housewife and raise children and, and cook. <laughs> What was the most fascinating or most memorable place you have traveled? Ah, the most fascinating place I've traveled was Italy. I took a cruise. I took a Mediterranean cruise um, to Italy um, about 10 years ago. And we stopped all along the uh, Mediterranean. Um, and being in Italy gave me a chance to go to Rome. Remember, I said I had been at the Catholic, I'd gone to Catholic school. So to see some of these places that we had talked about in school was absolutely mind blowing. The Colosseum, the Colosseum, the Colosseum was where the Romans would bring the Christians because the Romans didn't believe in uh, Christianity or followers of Christ. And they would bring the Christians and that's where they would turn the lions on them. Um, so to actually be standing by the Colosseum, I remember I touched it because I wanted to touch something that was 2000 years old, you know. So I would say Italy also because Italy has great food. Um, every village that you visit has different kinds of food. They may everybody might cook pasta and they might use olive oil, and they might have their own wine, Chianti. But every village has a different flavor to those same dishes. So you can have a dish in uh, one city that's the exact same dish as another city, but it tastes totally different. So I really enjoyed the food uh, in Italy. And the pizza was grand. I just have to say that. <laughs> Good morning. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. How about now? Yes. Good morning to you. Thank you so much for coming on board and supporting our access program. Uh, it has definitely been a delight to, to hear your rich history as an ATLian. Um, I too am an ATLian. I'm a Grady baby. I don't think oh. I. I don't think I heard you say you got you 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 were born at Grady Hospital, maybe. I wasn't. Okay, all right. Well, uh, you you did strike a sense of culture um, for me when you talked about Our Lady of Lords Catholic School. Yeah. I I started um, playing basketball at the Butler Street YMCA. Yes. Uh, learned how to box at the Butler Street YMCA over there. Now, did you grow up in the Fourth Ward? I did. I did. I grew up on uh, Boulevard. Um, well, when I was very small, we lived in Grady Homes. Okay. Um, okay. And then eventually we moved to Boulevard Place, which yes. is around the corner from City Hall East. Or Well, now it's, um, what do you call it? Pont City Market. It's around the yes. corner from Pont City Market. And so okay. that's where I grew up. Um, elementary school, uh, okay. all through college and uh, high school and college. I lived on Boulevard Place in the Fourth Ward. Okay. Okay. That's awesome. You know, it, it just reminds me of just Atlanta, you know, yes. this is old school Atlanta here you're talking to. And it was just good to hear that, you know, you are from that stock as well, but I will lead up Lord's Catholic school. When I played basketball at the YMCA was one of our competitors. And I just remember those young men used to beat us every time. <laughs> <laughs> well, my sons and my daughters went to our lady of Lords. And I was in the car with one of my sons recently, and we were driving in that area. He says, oh, mom, we used to come there for basketball. So that's right. That's, that's story. right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I, I um, went to Hope Elementary and I also went to Walden. 
elementary. So, you know, oh, that, that, that all the way. yeah, that community has some, some, you know, um, fond memories for me and everything. So, so thank you for, thank you for sharing your life story. It, it's, it's so wonderful to meet people like yourself. Uh, our director of communications is a Spelman grad as well. I'm sure you've spoken with her. Yes. Um, but on behalf of the board, the board of trustees at Arlington Christian School, myself, the entire staff and faculty, we're just so so elated that you came to hang out with us today. Thank you. You know, we believe in giving our historians their flowers while they're living. Thank you. You know, and you're such you, you have such a rich history, you know, of who you are and 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 jazz and singing. I tell you, Will Downey and Naji are my favorite jazz artists. Ah. Oh. You know, so, yeah, so it was uh yeah, especially Will Downey. He's one of my yes. favorites. Everything. Oh, yes. so, it was good to know that you know these guys personally. Yes. But thank you so much for adding to our the, the body of, of knowledge and history and uh, connectivity of our African American culture, our community. You know, this is what we're trying to do here at Arlington Christian School through our access program. We just like to keep prominent people, successful people, people that, you know, share positivity, love joy. Um, words of kindness, your colloquial expressions, you know, just those 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 words of kindness to just remind our scholars that, you know, just to be kind. Thank you, especially living in a world of chaos that we're living that's in. That's right. right. Now. And and that's what I grow up with. You know, you don't hear people say be nice much yes. these days. You yes. know, I think nice is a word you don't even hear that yes. often. But but my mom, like I said, she always says it's it's nice to be important. Yes, but yes, it's yes. just as important to be nice. She yes, always drilled that into me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, you yeah. know, absolutely. So thank you so much, ma'am, for your time today. You know, I'm going to pitch it on to our communication director and also uh, the spiritual leader of our campus, you know, Pastor Jones. Yes. But once again, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, myself and the entire faculty and staff, thank you so much for contributing to our access program. Thank you. I look forward to visiting when we get on the other side of this. Okay. That sounds good. Thank you so much. All we'll right. be in touch for sure. Okay. Okay. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Dr. Griffin. Thank you, Dr. Bertrand. We are so elated for your presence with us today. Uh, you were truly, truly a blessing and we have enjoyed you to the highest. We will have a plaque that's forthcoming to you uh, as a token of our appreciation. We also want to thank all of our program participants, our principal, our board of trustees. Special thanks to Mr. Sylvain for helping us with the logistics logistics, um, all of the teachers for pulling everything together, and to our speaker especially. We thank you from the very depths of our heart. I know that our scholars have been enlightened and enriched, as well as our faculty and our staff. God bless you. We love you. Have a wonderful day. Scholars, the bell has rung. So if you haven't already, you should still be in the same place. And so now you should be dismissed to your second period class. Have a wonderful day. We love you. God bless you.